for me, it was a dream of a lifetime. I, when I first started learning tanka painting, I never, uh, I never thought I'd ever get to go to Tibet, which was uh, was extraordinary. I started learning tanka painting in 1966, and it wasn't until 1985 that Tibet opened up, and I was able to go. And that was another dream. All of a sudden, uh, I was actually in a place that I'd spent 20 years of my life. Uh, uh, part of a tradition and to actually go and see these places that were only uh, myths to me in reality. When His Holiness was very young, we would regularly go up to Tsurpu to show him drawings in progress for his advice. I mean, it was quite remarkable because he'd look at the drawings and correct the tiniest thing. It was not like showing drawing to a child because he'd, he'd just comment on very small specific things. He corrected mm -hmm. the length of a finger, things like that. I mean, very precise. So it was very humbling. The first big tanka was made, uh, was made in uh, 1590 during the time of the, uh, of the ninth Karmapa. And on the day that uh, the Karmapa was enthroned, We went to uh, visit the abbot, Drupandecha and Rinpoche, and uh, he did a mow in just a couple of minutes. It was really quick, this mow. And uh, he said, yes, you're the people who should be doing this. Will you do it? And we immediately said yes. We were so privileged to work on this project, but also it was such an honor to work in the team of Tibetan craftspeople that we were with and it was an amazing team of women sewers that were, we were involved with and you know they were they were often the ones that worked the most and that did all that invisible sewing work so for us it's quite easy as you know western artists and we were involved in this great project and a lot of people did mention well you know why did you get involved in this well it was a real blessing. The, the monastery also established that we were the ones to raise the funds and design it and find the people to, to work to do it. We could help them with the design and they helped us with the scale of working with silks and a huge scale because you know we never worked on that scale before. We started off, there was nothing digital when we started doing the first filming of this. It was, uh, 1992, with the camera given to us, we started shooting. We were sort of in seventh heaven. We'd worked two years on this incredible project with incredible people, and it was completed. And we were uh, uh, sitting at the at, at the uh, at the foot of the uh, of, of the big tanka in the ceremony, and uh, one of the monks came and said, "Rimboche, I'd like to see you in in his room." And Rimboche looked at us, gave us a little smile, and said, uh, "Would you make a second one for us? This is not going to be quite like the uh, the Buddha tanka you just did. This is a protector, so it's a different form of energy." also we're told that it was 10 meters square and so of course in our minds oh it's smaller that's just going to be fine that'll be easy but actually it really wasn't about size and <laughs> it's it was actually much more complex drawing we we worked with Tenga Rinpoche on the measurements for, the, for that one or the actual form the main form because it was a protector tanka so black tanka so they're not very visible forms to, to find the iconography. Rinpoche was very kind and he said, don't worry, you know, His Holiness is praying every day for this image to happen. All you have to do is the work. And that project took us two and a half years. In the iconography of a tanka, the face is the basis of measurement of the full body. 
and the face is divided in 12 units which are represented by 12 fingers. And that would be A, that's a 6, and that would be a 4, that works. All began in 1992 when we worked on the first big tanker. Made all the figures, so then we had our 10 deities and then from there then we got into our bigger spaces and we mapped them on the floor depending on where they figured in the bigger picture and then we put the silk behind them if you painted a picture that's how you'd be doing it you have your background and then you build on the background but because of the scale we started with the figures and then mapped them on the ground how they should be positioned and then put the silk underneath All these lines are horsehair, so all this is manually the horsehair wrapped with silk to make all this line work. 1992 in Tibet, we were asked to do uh, to replace lost heritage of, of images which were destroyed during the Cultural Revolution. The first uh, is the 35 by 23 meter Karmagadri Kigu. The second was the Mahakala Kigu, which we began in, in 1994 and it was completed in 1997. The companion piece to the Mahakala Kigu, uh, the Norbu Drapje, was completed in 2007. We are presently working on the Sechur Drapje, which is the companion piece to the Karmagadri Kigu. This one will be made this year and will be given to Serpu. This will complete all four of the projects we were asked to do originally. Creation of the appliques for Tsurpu has spanned over 20 years and it's also an unprecedented event of having been able to work in Tibet to recreate the lost heritage as well as for Westerners to be part of this incredible tradition uh, in an effort to preserve the culture and the arts of Tibet. <laughs>